All right, so I bought new shocks for this thing. I already uh, went over refilling shocks on this channel once before. So I'm not gonna go through that with these. We're just going to get them on the truck here. So I'll show you all a uh, before picture. And uh, once we're done, I will show y'all an after picture. So let's get started on this. So this is a real simple process. <laughs> There's not going to be much to it. It's literally two screws. Um, unfortunately, with the way these are built, I'm not going to be able to use my shock shaft guards any anymore unless I change out the bottom uh, thing. But I like the fact that these screw on. These are Traxxas... Hold on, let me grab the package real quick. Yes, they are GTRs. And these right here are big bores. So these actually are a physical larger diameter than these here. Plus they're aluminum bodied instead of plastic. They do come with uh, plastic shock caps, which these here on the uh, uh, big bores are aluminum. However, I feel like these should hold up better than the plastic caps that come with uh the stock shocks just simply because they're a larger physically larger cap with hopefully larger more aggressive threads i guess we'll find out i don't plan on beating this thing hard enough to break shocks anyways but who knows so with the slash 4x4 platform you have xx long shocks and then you have short ones uh short ones go up front long ones go in the rear and the reason i went with these instead of like uh you can buy shocks for i want to say low c um, and probably a couple of other brands that'll fit this truck. I'm not 100% certain on the specifics, but long story short with those, there's uh, quite a bit of modification needed. Um, in order to, I think, get them to clear your tie rods, you have to space them out further forwards. And um, in the back, I can't remember, there's something you gotta do, but there's just a lot of adjustments. They're physically longer, so to get full travel out of them, you have to uh, build a plate that sticks up and holds them up here. There's a lot of fabrication work and stuff like that that goes into running those shocks. And then there's the price of them, which I think is like 80 bucks for a set of two, or I think it's even more than that. They're eighth scale, like uh, low C buggy shocks, but they're extremely expensive from what I've seen. So I just went with the uh, Traxxas GTRs because they have spring tuning. They have the, uh, the you know, adjustable threaded collar instead of having to worry with these stupid spring clips or whatever you want to call them. So we've just gone with these. But anyways, enough talking. Let's get into it. <laughs> that thing is bent, man. Bent bad. Another thing I like about these uh, GTR shocks is they actually come with the uh, the eyelets in them instead of an eyelet on bottom and just a simple like uh, bushing on top. So I like that pretty. Uh, I like that a lot. Question is, am I going to need that? No, because it fits inside these. So all right, we're good. I'm just going to go ahead and take all the shocks off. All right, so we got the old shocks off. Now the new ones are going on. So these are the long ones. Yep, so these go in the rear. All right, so there's a certain way that these eyelets here go against uh, whatever these things are attaching to. If you look at them, you've got one side that's a, that's like wide, right? And then you got one side that's skinny. And from what I remember, the wide side Oh man, I don't remember. It's been too long since I looked it up. But I want to say the wide side goes against your screw. 
like against the back of the head of the screw. So if you're mounting it to a shock tire, it would go like that. But I like to put it like this. And there's a reason this wider surface area back here being against your shock tower will keep that bushing from rocking on your shock tower once you have it tightened down compared to your skinnier side. So I put my uh, my wide sides against uh, shock towers or whatever I'm mounting them to same way down here. So in my opinion, it's just preference, but that's how I like to do it. So back to measuring these because I forgot which one this was. Here we go. Long. So this goes in the rear. Flat part to the rear. Those actually feel really good. I like that. Okay, so speaking of shocks, I'm not an expert on this, nor do I remember all the details, but I do believe moving them further in, it does something with the geometry and makes them feel stiffer. I think. I don't, I don't remember, but we're going to run them all the way in on the very inside hole on the shock tower. If I don't like it for some reason, or it causes some type of problem, then uh, I'll change it later on, but that's how we're going to run them for now. All right, that's it. That's all there is to it. That's how you change out the shocks on these. It's pretty simple. All right, let me get you a uh, an after shot. Thanks for watching. See y'all next time.